Here, I will show you why there's reason to have hope for the future. I understand that things really can keep getting worse and worse, that the fictional 1984 can come to pass and become truth, that all our lives can be thrown into darkness. Knowing this, we must stand up and push this political and social morass off of our country and forge ahead for a better future for our descendants. From OriginalRebel.net To save freedom, Bezmenov suggested very harsh responses to those who seek to violently overthrow our constitution, even if some liberties had to be temporarily suspended. The alternative is a full communist takeover or an even worse invasion by a foreign enemy. Bezmenov also suggested a mass public movement to remind and re-educate the population as to the virtue of traditional American values in order to help the citizens of America to regain their confidence in their base values. If on the one hand it's KGB normalization and on the other harsh responses to progressivism, you can be sure it will be tough either way, and violent too. Now, I'm not saying that as a threat, but only as a predictive observation. We are at the precipice between the steep slope of destabilization and the deep, deep pit of crisis. The only question is of our ability to turn around and start climbing back up the mountain. Now, largely speaking, there are two groups at odds with progressivism, the religious folks and the non-religious folks. Now, I understand that there's large differences between the two groups, and there's even large differences between the people in each group, but the unifying factor is opposition to the mainstream narrative. The good news begins here. If you're part of one of those groups, then you're not alone. People are beginning to get bold and to stand up. From spectator.org, America is an idea more than a nation. Our founding principles are what make us great. They made our people great. Talk to any legal immigrant and they'll reorient you along those lines because they know what it's like in a Venezuela, Vietnam, or South Africa but there is nothing genetic about Americans which makes us better than anyone else. If we lose those founding principles, we become just another declining, flaccid, pathetic Western country whose best days are past and whose leaders are busy auctioning themselves off to the chai -coms. The conservatives haven't conserved our founding principles. They've lost on the culture, the economy, civil liberties, limited government, ethics, and the rule of law. Defeat after defeat. And now, while the country is by no means gone as it surely would have been were it not for the incompetence and insanity of the left, there isn't as much remaining of those principles as we need there to be. We don't need conservatism. You don't conserve the forest after the forest fire. What we need is revival. Conservatism should be scrapped for revivalism. Now, this started with a certain orange man. But it's really picked up in the last couple years at parent-teacher meetings, school board meetings, and town halls. This is how real change happens, not politically, but culturally. Just look at Jesus. He had to constantly remove himself from crowds of followers that wanted to make him king of Israel. But he had come down to earth to change our hearts and minds. We must take that same principle, have hope and courage, and take a leap of faith. The true motivation for these actions that I speak of will be different for those two groups I mentioned earlier, the religious types will be able to pull on their doctrines and their traditions to form a basis on which to stand. But the non-religious types have to approach it from a different angle. They still can be effective though if they just realize that life is sacred and there's people that want them dead. That should be enough of a motivation. To the Christians who will cite Romans 13 in response to this video, know that God will be on our side whether we choose to stand back and get persecuted like Israel or stand up and resist. I'm not advocating for political upheaval or a coup d'etat. I'm advocating for changing of hearts and minds of people around this country culturally and to not compromise on what you believe. You just can't stand by when the government in this country says that women have the right to kill an unborn child, or that women and men don't exist at all, or that children can be put in sexual situations. You have to draw the line somewhere. It's time to stand up, put on the armor of God, and resist. Please, have hope. We can prove Mr. Bezmanov wrong and turn around our beloved home. After hearing this message, whether you stand up in courage or get back in line, either way, I'll see you next time.